Welcome back, Zero K fans. To Natalie is the Dawn. I remain your host, Chad of Fury three three three, and we are into round five of the Swiss portion of the Zero K May twenty seventh tournament. I really should have mentioned that was the tournament, but you can see it at the bottom of the screen. Anyhow, round five. We are going to be watching Lamedes and Guy up, but there's also Google Frog and Icons are fighting. Time for versus Fail Thousand Exploit versus Captain Klutz. And considering the standings. At this point, I'm pretty sure that the minimum score is going to be three in order to get in, so I'm sorry, x and Captain Klutz, but hey, it'd be interesting to see who wins between the two of them. Anyhow, Gaiap and Lamadeus are the highest standing players that are fighting, and so we will be watching them. And I'm curious to see how this is going to work out, too, because I haven't seen Gaiap play since that first round where they got kind of... I mean, they got... Obviously, they lost. I won't say they got creamed or anything. I don't want to really put it too badly or too harshly. They did lose, though, in large part because their opening choice of factory just didn't really make sense. But they've won every match since. So I'm not really sure what to say about that. Like, the, every match since then, like the one against Icons, the one against Filthos, they won against, Cap well, Captain Klutz. I mean, they've won pretty well against players that are ones I'd say favorite to win, or at least favorite to go pretty high up. Philthos in particular. So I'm curious how they'll do against Lamadeus, who is going to be the main challenge here. I mean, Lamadeus is an extremely strong player, as we've seen before. They aren't undefeated, though. They did lose in a match against... Oh, who was it? It was Dimefriend. Dimefriend beat them. Google Frog lost to them, however, so it's even things out quite a bit in terms of the overall standings. The question is, can Gaiap go 4-1, or will Lamadeus go 4-1? And in either case, they're probably going to end up going off to the next stage of the tournament anyway. The main... Actually, the main question, I suppose, is, like, Failthos, or Failthos and such, but there's a lot of questions. It's not really clear who's going to win until it's over. Anyway, once we get Lamadeus in here, we should... Oh, Lamadeus isn't here. Why are they not playing? Anyway... We are going to be on Alien Desert. That is a map which most people should be very fairly familiar with. It's a fairly common and quite Yeah. It's a fairly common map that was played a long time ago. It hasn't played as much recently, but it is a map you see. It is a map that comes up that makes the rounds from time to time. It's effectively in Kulta, but small. Anyway, once we get this going, we... I expect Lamadeus will be going for Hovercraft, because this is a flat map. And... Other than that, there's... Not a whole lot else to say. I mean, it's a flat map... It's a fairly moderate-sized map, not especially small, not especially large. So I expect Hovercraft to come from Lamadeus, because Lamadeus loves their Hovercraft. I would expect to see Gaiap go for Hovercraft as well, actually. I expect a Hovercraft Mirror. Considering who is playing and what they've done so far, I expect to see the Hovercraft Mirror of the century. Or at least, of these few minutes. Lamadeus indeed going for the Hovercraft Factory, and what do we have from Gaiop? Gaia probably going for Hovercraft as well, we'll see what happens. No, going for Light Vehicles! Straight up Light Vehicle Factory, that's not what I expected at all. So once this gets going, we have what might be one of the harder matchups for the Hovercraft Factory, I'd say. I mean, especially once the once we get a lot of buildup of Ravagers and Levelers, it can actually be kind of tricky for the Hovercraft Factory to get in and deal much damage. Like, early on, it's not a big deal. Early on, it's usually Scorchers and Scorchers against Daggers. Not really easy for Scorchers. But later on in the match... I've generally seen this work out in a way that makes Light Vehicle look like a stronger party. Now, of course, 
I could be completely wrong, and we also are dealing with Lamadeus here, and Lamadeus is a strong player. Strong Hovercraft player as well, but a strong player, period. So I don't expect there to be too many issues for them to actually maintain a strong position here. I do expect that they are going to be dealing a little bit with the darts, but the darts shouldn't be that much of a threat. I mean, this one actually over... Oh, never mind. No, 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 no. Two darts coming around the back here can get rid of some energy. Going for the metal instead. Doesn't really matter. The important thing is they're getting a lot of information. They get to see the entirety of Lamadeus's base. Lamadeus, however, coming with the daggers, and this is a much more significant threat as the daggers coming in here not only are seeing everything again, but they are or would be in a much better position to kill things they are not however going to do so so both players well aware of the other's base construction not all that able to raid it guy up also a little bit behind economically speaking there's been much more of a focus on expansion for lemadeus and lemadeus also going for a bit more production off the bat guy up on the other hand they don't have any mason or they have a mason but that's all they have their commander basically just being used to build up power and not surprisingly but rather surprisingly, not being used to help out a little bit with the factory, but I guess that's fine. I mean, they don't have enough metal to make that productive anyway. So it's not going to be a big deal. Lamadeus, however, has seven daggers. That is basically critical mass to help deal with the Scorchers. So this is where I'd say levelers are really necessary, and that's what's happened. Guy up on the ball with that, getting those early levelers, which they need. If the Scorchers can avoid the daggers as well, that's going to be a nice bit of raiding going on, but I don't think that's going to happen. Mostly because the Scorchers are pretty much right in the path of the Daggers. Never mind, no. Never mind, actually. They are they are going around. The Daggers, on the other hand, coming around the front. And the Scorchers are going to try to intercept. I can't say I agree with that. Although, if the Daggers go for the Lotus, that will not happen. Because the Daggers don't actually go in. I was going to say they were going to shoot them. Going to be on reload. Not going to happen. We are not seeing that at all. Lamadeus being very wise about their usage of units. They are just... They're waiting for the right opportunity. At any rate, Gaiop's main base is essentially completely unassailable with what Lamadeus has. Between the leveler, mostly between the leveler and the Lotus, it's not much else. The Scorchers aren't going to help. I mean, the Scorchers will help a little bit if they don't get hit first, but daggers are really quick, so there's no easy way the Scorchers are going to get in. The main thing is if these Scorchers can get around the daggers, and no, they're not trying to go do so. They're actually trying to intercept again. I mean, the leveler's in a strong position where it can pretty easily take care of these daggers. Although the southern daggers will be a bit more of a problem. Slasher won't do the trick. We've seen this before. Slashers get torn to pieces pretty quick. I mean, they're intimidating, and if there's enough of them, then it's a problem for the daggers. But if there aren't enough of them, and one is not enough, it's, it's completely non-threatening. The daggers can rush in, like seven daggers can rush in, maybe lose one in their number, and then rip apart the, the slasher in one volley. So it doesn't really help. More slashes does help, though. And I'd say Gaiop has enough slashes to maintain that center control fairly convincingly. While Lamadeus also getting center control, they do have roughly the same economic strength. So Gaiop's only real advantage is they have managed to kill an extra scorcher or daggers worth, uh, extra scorchers worth, extra couple daggers worth of metal. That's about the only real advantage. And actually, now this is a huge advantage. A quill getting torn to pieces by a scout, by a couple slashers. They're going to lose their lives in the process, or existences. I mean, that's assuming that the units are conscious and not simply entirely controlled by the commander. I mean, they're somewhat autonomous. Anyway, philosophy aside, the, the Scorchers did get destroyed in the process of killing the quill, which I do agree with. Because that slows everything down. Like, Lamadeus' expansion efforts towards the center of the map have been slowed down by about 30 seconds to a minute as a result of losing that quill. I, I very rarely disagree with killing workers. I mean, from a moral perspective, maybe, but from a practical perspective, no. It's generally a good idea. And Lamadeus going in for the revenge kill on the Mason. But at the same time, while some of the scout the... Scalpels have died. The leveler is doing a great job just tanking those shots and forcing the scalpels away. So the slashers in the back, their deaths were not in vain. At the same time, Lamadeus is doing a fairly good job maintaining control over the center of the map, or at least the southern center of the map. And that quill there, taking even longer than I expected, taking almost a minute to build up that radar, which 
slows down the expansion attempts for Lamadeus even further. That Quill being killed by Gaiop, that's going to be fairly significant. I mean, losing the Mason as well is also significant. The northwest side is essentially completely unchanged. Lamadeus knows that they're going to go for it. They're going to be able to get rid of most of these Lotuses as well. They won't lose too many daggers in the process. I mean, at the same time, this southern side is a little bit iffy. I mean, the Halberd is able to come in. The Halberds should be able to take care of these Slashers, no problem. There aren't enough Scorches to deal with the Halberds. So, I expect Lamadeus to be going for a few more of those, and indeed they are quite a few more, actually. Building half a dozen of them just off the bat, not even repeating that, just going for it. But at the same time, losing all their daggers in the southeast, losing their quill to the southeast, cutting off even more expansion efforts. Like, they've already lost two quills. Oh, that is a quill, right? No, it was a radar tower. They've already lost at least one quill. They, ah, this is the second quill. But still, they've lost quills, or they had quills pushed away. Not dead, but not doing any work. Gaia, however, not managing to turn that into an economic advantage quite yet. I mean, they're still managing to maintain territory advantage, which is the first step. I mean, you get territory, and then you get economy, and then you get production, and then you get military. Which then gets you more territory. That's the cycle of 0k. But... That's not quite what we're seeing right off the bat. In fact, what we're seeing is Lamadeus coming in, able to get rid of all these elements that had been built up, all these defenses that had been built up over to the northwest side of the map without any real support and without a mason coming in to fortify them once it was clear that this northwest side is getting attacked. However, that is not where Gaia has focused their economy. Their economy is in the center of the map, not really in the back. They aren't trying to do the standard thing of keeping your economy in the back to try to keep it safe. They're keeping it in the front and having a bunch of units and defenses near that instead. I mean, the terrain doesn't necessarily help, although it's not terrible. It does provide a lot of choke points to work with. But it's where they're focused. So losing the back, while it's a bit of a blow, only really lost them about 6 metal per second, while they have most of the center and are only 3 metal per second away from Lamadeus. Like at this point, Lamadeus' income, I mean, they're not doing too terribly. Lamadeus is ahead, but metal use is only a few hundred metal in between. It's actually be within the within the damage rate. So right now, Gaiop is at a slight advantage, even though they haven't used as much metal. Their unit value is still ahead. Now, the Firewalker could turn this around. It's going to be a little bit tricky. But with the levelers not anywhere near the Firewalker, I don't think it's going to be a problem. They're going to be able to get rid of basically everything. The daggers do not pose a threat. The quill obviously doesn't pose a threat. The defenders pose no threat. The north side has essentially been torn to pieces, and Gaiab effectively has control over this entire side of the map. Like, they have two-thirds of the map under their control. Or at least under soft control. The southern side is still an opening that can be attacked by Lamadeus. The north side, they've gotten control over now, but they haven't completely consolidated. But still, they've managed to wipe out pretty much everything Lamadeus tries to, tried to do in a tricky way. And now just have a frontal assault that could very easily win this game. I'm not sure what Lamadeus really has to deal with this. There's a couple scalpels in Firewalker. The Firewalker isn't going to deal enough damage. The scalpels might if the Ravagers get too close after a couple of volleys deal enough damage to kill a few Ravagers. But by the time that happens, we're gonna, we see already that's not going to be enough. Lamadeus is essentially losing their entire main base. And that is it. Gaia really just being clever with their unit construction. They, they're, they're levelers at the first two or three minutes in the game, pretty much gave them the match. Because there weren't the normal Scorcher setup. I mean, it was levelers against dagger against daggers, yeah. And there wasn't a whole lot of halberd use. There wasn't a whole lot of scalpel use. Not early on, anyway. Not early enough on. So Lamadeus, I mean, their only upside here is that they aren't losing a whole lot of their infrastructure yet. And they might actually manage to... Yeah, they're going to get rid of most of the Ravagers before that happens, but... At the same time, the center of the map has been torn apart. There was scalpels coming in torn to pieces by Scorchers. And Lamadeus did lose a fair amount of their metal. Like, they are now 10 metal per second behind their metal income. So Gaiop can easily turn that into a production advantage and easily turn that into a military advantage greater than they already had. They already kind of had one. Losing the Ravagers is a big blow. I mean, if you look at unit value, it's, it did drop below Lamadeus, but it's not that big of a blow. All things considered, 
Guy up right now has got effectively everything they need to win this game. Or very nearly. Lamedeus, they did get an attrition advantage as a result of that. But one good fight here, and the Scorchers should... Oh no, Scorchers are going to get killed by Scalpel. This is not going to work out at all. The Scorchers are dead. The Halberds might go down in the process, and the Scalpels, if they go down, that's going to be all worth it. And they do! Scorchers do manage to get rid of all of this stuff. This is why I say Scorchers are the unit of choice against Halberds. There's not much Halberds can do. I mean, if they attack, they're dead. If they don't attack, they're not dead as quickly, but they're still dead, obviously. Because Scorcher Heat Ray deals so much damage from up close that even with the armor bonus, it's not enough to make a significant dent. And Gaia, not managing to quite get rid of that army of Halberds and Scalpels, but very nearly get rid of it. Wipe it down to two units from about a dozen, over a dozen. It was like seven Halberds and five or six Scalpels, so yeah, it was... There was a lot there that was just torn to pieces. Now these levelers coming in to get rid of Lamedes' commander, getting rid of quite a bit of infrastructure at the same time. Lamedes' commander should be fine, but it doesn't matter. They lost a caretaker, lost quite a bit of power, didn't manage to get a lot of reclaim yet, so now they have to build the caretakers on top of that, and they didn't need it as much yet. They weren't quite as economically healthy as they needed to be to make those caretakers work, but that's still a blow. I mean, once they get the energy for it, and they lost a lot of that too, they have all this reclaim to work with. Like, all they really need is a few more power plants, and they can get this reclaim, and they can get themselves back in the game. Like, it's it's not a huge disadvantage yet. It's only a... Well, okay, a thousand metal is actually kind of getting pretty big. But in terms of income, it's only been recently that that's actually been a difference. Like, there's still not a huge difference in terms of how much metal's been used. And with enough reclaim and enough power, Lamedeus could... Could scramble their way back into this game. It's going to be tough. But I don't see it as being over yet. I see it as being over fairly soon if they're not careful, but not yet. Actually, Lamedeus' commander does not have anything on them for build power. They're just building with their own power, but they have more than enough money to do so. So they're good. However, guy up with the Rapiers coming in might just seal the deal. It's... The one challenge for Lamedeus right now is the fact that they can't really get territory. Even setting up defenses is proving to be quite difficult. That's a problem if for no other reason than Lamadeus is now trying to fight an uphill battle because they don't have a whole lot to work with that doesn't just get killed right off the bat. Especially with the rapiers up. They think these rapiers are probably going to be the thing that causes Lamadeus to throw in the towel. I mean, they have the energy, they can reclaim, and they are working on it a little bit. I'm surprised one of these characters is not actually reclaiming as it is, but even then, it's not nearly enough. And Lamadeus, realizing this, decides to concede. They should still be moving on into the next round, but yeah, that's going to be a bit of a problem. And that's like that's really where it happened. This this fight here sealed the deal for Guy up. Anyway, that that being said, I think we are going to see. Okay, Google Frog has beaten Icons. Dying friend, Dying friend failed us exploit, and Captain Klutz has not been completed. Although Dying friend failed us is the only other one that's actually relevant for standings. But with Google Frog beating Icons, I'm pretty sure our standings are going to be relatively unchanged. I mean, it's a little hard to say, but Google Frog's got four points. Dying Friend is four points. Lamadeus is three points. And by the rules, if Dying Friend wins, then it's three. Actually, no, in both cases. I think if I think it's just going to be Guy Up, Google Frog, and the winner of Dying Friend and Filthus moving on to the single limb bracket. With Guy Up getting a seed. Or presumably. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. So, yeah, but this is going to be a little tricky. I'm not sure how this is going to work out just because it's three people in a single limb bracket. And that always makes things a bit tricky. Anyway, that'll be back when it's back. When that's back, I will obviously be back. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up and updated in a couple minutes.